go to New York City for a benefit concert and a rendezvous with her closest friend, none other than John Tackett. It's because I go to New York to see my friend John. He said, I can't wait to see you. Ever since they met, they've gotten together at least twice every year. Their last reunion was a joint family vacation to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I wanted to be buried, so um, John buried me, and but it was so hard to get out on the beach. Then for my jewelry, I also have a cross. John gave it to me. You know what it's like to have someone special in your life, just someone who's going through exactly what you're going through, who knows exactly how you feel, and he's been where she's at, he's going through the same things, and they just share such a bond that it's just, words cannot describe it. For John, the trip to New York is exciting in more ways than one. Not only will he see Ashley again, but the benefit is a rock concert. And music, especially rock music, is a big passion. Someday I want to be a rock star, playing on stage in front of millions of people. In this, John's lucky. His is a passion that's all in the family. Both Lynn and Troy are musicians and have their own band. So John doesn't have far to go for teachers and mentors. I have a few years before I get to go to drum college. And if I get really good and audition and make it, then great. And if I get a band and be a huge star, then great. But if not, go be a studio musician. You know, I don't think they're hurting any for money, so that'd be a great job. College, graduation, stardom, normal dreams for an above average teen. Trouble is, with Progeria, John is far from a normal teen. Morning in which he's driving, and then the rest of the time she wears contacts. Claire, can I borrow your glasses? Ashley now has all the characteristics of full-blown progeria. She's barely three feet tall, and because she has lost all subcutaneous fat, she tips the scales at a mere 21 pounds. She's bald and has prominent veins. Her face is small and triangular, her nose beaked. She won't get her adult teeth or go through puberty. It's these typical characteristics that make the children of Progeria look more like each other than anyone else, even their biological parents. Very little is known about this disease or what causes it. Doctors and specialists are left with simply describing its effects. They're even in the dark on how to adequately treat it, let alone come up with a cure. One of the leading lights in the field of progeria research is Dr. Leslie Gordon of Tufts University in Boston. It is probably a disease of genetic origin where there is a genetic defect of at least one gene or possibly even more than one gene which starts very early in life. If you look at the cells, the skin cells from a child with progeria in a dish in the laboratory, they start out looking like the cells from a normal child. But the cells from a child with progeria will look older, more damaged, sooner, and they will simply slow down and stop dividing. So since she was conceived, Ashley's been aging at a rate of about seven years for every year of her life. That makes her now actually closer to 70. Some 70 year old. Although their skin, hearts, and blood vessels age rapidly, most of their other organs develop normally, including a key one. The incredible part about progeria is that the children have completely normal intellect, personalities, the brain, other than the vessels that go to the brain, is completely unaffected. 
As different as Ashley is from her schoolmates and friends, the amazing thing is she's both easily accepted and well-liked, in part due to her surprising attitude. Oh, yes, she loves your hair. It's neat because I'm different from everybody else, and, and it was just the way I was born. Ashley's a very positive girl. She's very, she kind of brings out the best in people, and she was just born that way. She's just always, <laughs> just always been such a free spirit, just so full of love and, and kindness. <laughs> Progeria does not change your mindset or the progression of the brain. It changes the progression of the body. In John's case, this means being both good in school and a whiz at his hobbies. He's won events with his remote control cars and is on the winning eight ball team at the local boys and girls club. It hasn't always been this easy. The first day of school, the first couple of years was horrible. You know, he wears do-rags now, but he used to just wear a baseball cap. He's Inevitably, <laughs> some kid... Wants to take his hat off yep. and throw it around class and tease him about his lack of hair or the hair that he does and makes him feel bad. Take that 13 first. But John kept plugging. By now, at the beginning of ninth grade, he's popular and well beyond the social problems his parents feared. You're the strongest one on the team. I've already experienced uh, going to a football game and um, hanging out with the marching band, which I'm going to be playing in the game Friday. Maybe next year I'll run for a student council. He makes it so easy because he is such a, he's a tiger about this. He's just John. His favorite story uh, is about David and Goliath. Those things that are hard for him are his giants, and so he puts a stone in the sling and he takes after him. Ever since he was a little boy, he'd want me to read that story to him over and over again. And I would think, why do you like this story? And I thought, well, that makes sense to me. He sees himself as David and everything else the giant. When I figured that small little story out from, from him so young, I, I got such a piece about it. And we just take one day at a time. But with progeria, a day comes when time starts running out. For Ashley, it strikes at the most inopportune moment, just before her trip to New York and the chance to see John. We were at a friend's having dinner, and she got the chest pain, so we just immediately left. So I had to go to the hospital because my doctor said that I should go to the hospital, and I next got chest pain. That evening, Ashley is rushed to emergency at the local hospital. The doctors fear the worst. Her heart may be giving out. Dr. John Holland is Ashley's pediatrician in Lethbridge. She has a very long chest wall with a rather enlarged heart, the ribs themselves. She's in a phase now where we're starting to see heart problems which she didn't previously have a year or so ago. So she has, she has changed in, in a sense. Um, she has had problems with migraines and there's always a concern about little mini strokes. Almost all of the children die from heart disease in progeria. Whether that's a heart attack or strokes, it's caused by the blockages in the vessels that these children experience. Strokes, something John knows all about. There was a day when he was eight when suddenly he couldn't speak. At the hospital, an MRI reveals that both carotid arteries in his neck are blocked. Children don't normally suffer strokes. The doctors must guess at which drugs and at what dosage to give him. The fear is the standard adult treatments could kill him. John's lucky. The treatments work. A major stroke is avoided. You scared me. But 
what's an early warning for John becomes a full-blown crisis for Devon. And it hits so fast and hard that the evening is seared into Jamie's memory. September 28th, 6 o'clock at night, his whole arm just hung, and I knew. I knew what happened. the hospital. They did a CAT scan and said there was some swelling on the brain, on the right side of the brain, and he had a stroke. You couldn't understand what he was saying. He couldn't understand anything. Um, he was very frustrated because he couldn't communicate with us anymore. This wasn't a good day that day. After 10 days, Devin is stabilized. He and Jamie are sent home. However, three weeks later, Devin suffers another major stroke. I was scared. I was, I honestly thought, I thought I was going to lose something. Summer. All roads lead to Little Miss Sunshine. Come on, Come on, honey. Come on sweetie, jump. Jump in the car. Oh, can't stop. Jump. Newsweek calls it an absolute winner. Whoa. Hey! Oh, jeez. I'm being pulled over. Two thumbs way up. Everybody just pretend.